What's going on guys? Welcome back once again to the Tring Shoe Repair and Key Shop channel. As always, I'm Dan. Now, today's video, I'm already a fan of. We've got a triple job. Three pairs of boots all in for the same job. So we've got these lovely Church's Chelsea boots. We have a pair of Trickers Chelsea boots, sort of broguing. And my favourite, which we haven't had in for a while, a pair of John Lobb boots. Now, they're all having the same job, which is a full JR Soul. So I'm going to squeeze these three jobs into one video and I think it's going to be great. Keep watching, see what it's all about. All right, once again, welcome back, guys. Now let's just take a quick look at the jobs. So all of the boots are on the original soles, but they're worn out. The customer has had Lulu tips added, all right? But what we're doing is we're stripping them all down and replacing them with full JR soles. These John Lobs have had a blind stitch, so we're gonna do a blind stitch on the John Lobs, and we're going to be adding the Lulu tips again on all of them. Now, I'm not gonna show you each job in detail because then the video will probably be over an hour, but I'm gonna show you bits and bobs, you'll get the idea. Um, and at the end, we're gonna do a bit of a different twist on each boot, which is gonna be fun. So let's get cracking. Okay, guys, let's get to business. So we're starting with our John Lobs. I'll show you on the heel. JL, John Lobb. Fine, British manufacturers. So, boot on the last, and we're just starting by taking our top lift heel off. So these Lulu French tips, the previous repairer has put them in just fine, but he's used these tiny screws that don't belong there rather than the brass official Lulu screws. So we're just gonna pull them straight out. John Lobbs, we're just working at removing the heel block. How's everybody doing? It's that time of the week where I like to know what you guys have been up to in all your different parts of the world. I am interested in what goes on outside of this shop. <laughs> there he is. Okay, rock and roll. So now it's time to cut all of these leather soles off. So we're just taking a blade and cutting between the leather sole and the welt breaking the old stitches. All right, so we're just apply a bit of heat to the old sole to uh, deactivate some of the old glue. And then with any luck, there we go, it should just come straight off okay and we can see corks come away crumbling so we need to address the cork all right guys rock and roll so we're making a good start taking apart all three pairs but we've still got to take apart their partners the left and right shoes so instead of making you watch all of that i'm just going to blast through it real quick and then we can move on to the new soles fun guys well, let me show you where we're up to so our John Lobs the cork is fine but our churches we've got to take out this old cork all right also the shank has come unglued so we've just got to glue that shank back in all 
right guys, so the next thing on the agenda is we have to pick out all of the old stitches from the welt and that's so that when we stitch the new sole on, the old threads don't get in the way of the new thread. Now the thing with uh, sole stitches is they can vary in length. So on these churches, it's measured, measured in inches. So the churches have got a stitch uh, frequency of seven stitches per inch, which is normal. The trickers, pretty much the same. I would say they're eight stitches per inch, but the John Lobs, the John Lobs are crazy. They have got a stitch density. I'm not sure if I can really show you. There we are, of 12 stitches per inch. So I've had to clear my afternoon to unpick these stitches. So let's get to it. Okay, rock and roll, so that's finally all the stitches out. Now it's time to replace our cork layer. So we've got our tin of bottom filler. And we're gonna get a cork in to this gap here. Now if you're new to the channel, I'll explain to you why we have a cork layer. So this is one of the main parts of the shoe that squashes down and gives you the unique shape of your foot in your shoe. So it really gives it a customized, comfortable feel over time. These trickers have got quite a deep cavity, so we can get loads of cork in there. So that should be really comfy once the customer's taken them through the break-in period, which you'll have to do again once we've got these new leather soles on. All right, let's do all the other shoes. guys so we are ready to get our new soles on so we've got all of our JR leather soles here yeah, man that's a few quids worth of stock right there so uh, if I haven't told you before if you're new to the channel JR leather is some of the best in the world you just win all around not only does it last longer it's more comfortable and it's more waterproof so let's get to it so we've got our soles here ready for our contact adhesive to be applied now you know what I'm gonna say I'm gonna say let's get sticky, but this is gonna be the stickiest we've ever got on the channel. So all together guys, let's get sticky. cool guys so there's all our shoes glued up well the first three and then of course we've got our soles glued up so now we just need to heat the glue up to activate it stick it all together so we're going to get these soles in the heat lamp and then we're just using the heat gun on the shoe just to heat it up from two sides freeze all right, so now it's nice and hot, we can stick our sole on. So with our JR, we wanna make sure we've try our best to get the JR logo nice and centered. Just so that it's aesthetically pleasing once we're finished. Okay, then hammer on. Oh no, where's my hammer? There he is, hammer! <clears throat> Give him a quick press.
Okay, boys and girls, that is all of our soles on. So the next step would be to stitch all the soles on. But before we do that, we need to cut a groove into the lever for the stitches to sit into. As I said earlier, the John Lobs, we're doing a blind stitch, so we need to cut the blind stitch in. And the churches that are over there, I'm actually pre dyeing the finish before I put it on the stitcher. So let's crack on. Hold on, I missed a step, my friends. Ron, you should have reminded me. We need to cut our recesses in for our French tips now before we do the groove so that the uh, so that we have our stitches all nicely in before we start doing the cutting, which makes sense. So we get a correct size toe plate, line it up where we want it, and then just make a score mark with our knife where we would need it. Okay, and then we're just going to work at cutting away our recess so that the toe plate will sit in nice and flush. Okay, so there we go folks. Ready for our toe. So now we can groove everything. doing here my friends is cutting the blind stitch on the John Lobs and if you haven't seen one of my videos where we do a blind stitch I'll tell you what you do it you know let me concentrate whilst I'm talking um, the blind stitch is essentially we cut away a thin sliver of leather from the sole that's already attached to the shoe peel it back the stitches go underneath that flap and then we glue it back and it is invisible you can't see the stitches so it's mainly for aesthetics but it will help the stitches last a little bit longer also so i will show you what that's like when it's done the only way i can describe this job is it's like peeling the world's most tricky potato <laughs> so you've got to be careful in fact i'm going to where is he i'm going to enlist ron for support come on ron we can do this okay so as we just get a little deeper with our blind cut what we're doing is just lifting up and levering this cut away back a bit to get it out of the way of the stitcher for when we put the new stitches in okay uh, now something i'll just say because i got this question quite a lot there was con some confusion last time we did the blind stitch and some people said why don't you cut the blind stitch in and stitch the sole before you put it on the shoe uh, and I was a bit surprised to get this question because the whole point of stitching the soles is to stitch it to the shoe. How are we going to stitch it to the shoe if we do it before it's on the shoe? Yeah. So <laughs> that's why we do it when it's on the shoe. Okay guys, so we are over here at our outsole stitcher to stitch all the soles on. And a couple of things I wanted to show you. We've got a few different stitch designs. So the trickers here, the stitching goes all the way around the heel because it's a 360 welt that goes all the way around. The churches, I've already done actually, uh, but the stitching only goes up to there, just to the heel round because it's a 270 welt. So that's as far as we can stitch up to. The John Lobs, we're doing the blind stitch on and uh, something else I wanted to show you is in the machine we have a top thread and a bottom thread and we've got to make sure we've got the right color in. So on the churches, for example, they're brown. So obviously we need brown thread in the top and we're doing white thread on the bottom of all the soles. So let's stitch it all together. So that's all our soles stitched on so the 360 on the triggers so we've just got to hammer down the stitches and cut off the thread on those same as the churches the john lobs of course we've done the blind stitch there he is so now what we need to do is hammer down those stitches but then get glue under this flap and then it's going to 
come down and hide the stitches. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so this is where we go around and get the glue in between the lever, ready to stick it back down. I'm gonna get right down deep in that crack so that there's no air bubbles. And what I'm actually gonna do on this is give it a double coat of glue to really make sure it sticks because there's nothing worse than a loose flap. So what we're doing here is just taking a hammer and doing a sort of rolling action to force the lever exactly back where it came from. And there's no lumps or bumps. Right, so now on our boots that don't have the 360 welt, we've got to put some last tacks through the heel round, okay? So there's these tiny little nails. and get a lot of questions on this as well. Don't the nails stab his feet? <laughs> the nails go through and then they squash against the metal last so no way you're gonna feel those All right so let's get these in there why is that keep getting in the way oh it's a cream egg <laughs> forgot about that we're done with all that business I think I'm just gonna go and give the soles a bit of a jazz up with some stain Okay, rock and roll guys, so here's our soles with some stains on them. Now, the customer said I could have some fun with these, so we've done three different ones on the churches. We've just gone for a nice classic look with patina. The uh, trickers have gone for this nice, uh, I'm gonna call this Crimson Sky. And the John Lobs, I'm gonna call this Cross Hatch Fiesta. Okay, now what we have to do next is go around the edges, put some edge dressing on, and then whack the Lulu tips on. Okay guys, so when it comes to screwing these Lulu plates on, they come with these little brass flathead screws, uh, which are branded as the Lulu plate screws, but they don't fit. And I've heard from a reliable source that the screws and the plates come from different manufacturers. So if you remember, I showed you at the beginning, the previous repair, I'd used these small little chrome Phillips heads. So do you know what? I'm taking a page out of his book and doing the same thing, seeing how these will look once they're done. To be honest, I think they'll look quite smart. Hiya, how can I help? Yeah. All right. Last one. Okay, there we go. guys rock and roll so what we just did there was whip around on the machine the edge of the toe plates to make them an exact fit 
And we are done with our soles. We're all last tacked on around the heel section. Uh, so speaking of heels, the next step is to crack on with putting all the heels together and getting them on the boots. Hey, did you see that? <laughs> that was the sheriff guy, he's in his police car. He was dropping off some cowboy boots. I think I've got to get him in for an episode sometime. But anyway, here we are with our bag down. Now let's get all the pieces together for our heels. Just like that. So these are all the heel blocks that came off and these are all of our new heels, all the JR dovetail heels prepared. Now what you might have seen is I've got these little uh, markings here on the heel blocks and this is just to remind me which one's which. Trickers right, trickers left, just so that the correct heel blocks go back on each one. So one more time, let's get sticky. Okay, done, 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 done. So let it all dry. We're gonna do two coats on the heel blocks, I think, just because they're a little bit absorbent. And then we're gonna heat everything up and get it all together and move on to getting them on the shoots. Okay guys, so for the next part of our heel block, um, I've put you on the other side of the counter for a customer POV to talk to you about the pitch. We've got a heel block there and the shoe, we can see it's not balanced, it's wonky, so it'll be uncomfortable right down the middle there. So what we need to do, and, and it's because the JR heel is thicker, so what we need to do is angle down the heel block so that it's all level. Okay, so now, there we are, lovely jubbly. All right, all right, all right. So now all our heel blocks are made up and level. Uh, finishing touches, we're going to paint our inside edge, which is called the heel breast, before we put it on the shoe, so we don't have to go anywhere near our nice finished sole. So what we do is take some very fine sandpaper, smooth this, which is actually what I've done on the soles as well. I just forgot to shoot it, silly me. And then we're gonna ink it. Right, and then we'll take this over to the brush, shine it up, and then we can work at gluing everything to the shoes. All right, so while all that glue stuff's drying, I've gone and got myself a cheeseburger. I had to, guys. I could smell it from the burger shop across the road. But also, um, if you're still watching right now, I owe you guys a thank you, because you're my extra special viewers. YouTube tells me my average view duration for my videos, and that is usually about 15 minutes. And we're past 15 minutes in this video. No idea where we are, shall I guess? I'm going to say 24 minutes. <laughs> so you guys are my extra special loyal viewers, so thank you so much. Okay, ladies and gents, we are back. Now, getting our heel blocks on, our dovetail heels have a left and a right. Same as the heel blocks, but we put them together properly. Now we need to make sure as we get the left and the right on the correct shoe. And if you're like me, you struggle with simple things like telling your left and right, this can be a very scary moment. Hours of work undone in a moment. <laughs> There we go. All right, and then we head over to the heel press. Okay, rock and roll, so all our heel blocks are on. So now we're just gonna go around with our brass tacks and secure the top lift onto the heel, and it's just a nice decorative finish too. In this video yet. <clears throat> Jeremiah was a bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. I never understood a single word he said, but I helped him drink his wine. <laughs> oh, I love that song. I'll tell you what, I'll get a new one for you. <laughs> you know when something just gets stuck in your head. So we're nearly done. The very final part of the repair, guys, is we need to secure the heel block on from the inside. Now, the way we do this with Chelsea boots, 
or any tool boots is we use it's called a slide hammer okay so we pop a nail down inside this plunger goes down pops the nail into the shoe okay so it's going to pop him in there get our nail in there okay pop them in John Lobb's not such an issue because we've got a zip, so we can undo it, get into it easily, and just use a long nose hammer, which is a, a little bit of a quicker job. All right, gang, there we go. The meat and potatoes of our repairs are done. So these are the trickers, all the heel tacks in. Then, of course, we've got the churches, and then my favorite, the John Lobb's. Okay, which repair is your favorite? Let me know in the comments which shoes are your favorites. Uh, now we're not quite done. Just before we give them back to the customers, we're gonna go around and give the uppers some TLC. So the first thing we're gonna do is just whip around all the shoes with a cleaner. So we've got our Saphir Gentle Cleanser here. And what this is gonna do is just get rid of any of the old uh, dust, sediment, and old polish on the shoes. So we're just gonna do that on all of them. And then we can move on to putting some, some conditioner in them. So once we've cleansed all of our boots, then we need to nourish the leather. So we've got what you've seen me use before, the Woli Creme Essentiel. So this is essentially moisturizer, the leather. It's gonna keep the leather soft and supple, and it also prepares them nicely to be shined up. Okay, so once our condition is all dry, we're going to further condition them and add some color to any of the faded areas of our Puro renovating cream. Okay, so this comes in all sorts of different colors. We've got espresso here for the churches. It's almost an exact match. So we're just gonna get some on a, a cotton cloth and massage it in. Now for the final touch, they're already nice and shiny, but we're gonna finish it off with a nice polish. So we've got the Saphir Pat Deluxe here. It's made with beeswax and a whole bunch of high quality oils. So we're just gonna take a horsehair brush apply it all over the place. I think I'm gonna go for an extra shine on the toe, a bit of a mirror shine. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, rock and roll. So for a mirror shine that we're gonna do on the trickers, just on the toe, we're gonna use our Saphir Mirror Gloss. Now it's only gonna be a little mirror shine. I haven't got time for a super spanking mega shine, unfortunately, because the customer's coming back in a minute, actually. So we just take our fingers, the Mirror Gloss, and this just helps it melt. Now what you find with this mirror gloss is it's a much harder wax than other polish. And the reason being is it's the, uh, the wax that makes up the foundation for a shine. Normal polishes are made with something like a 50-50 mix of waxes and solvents. And that's because the solvents help melt the wax so that you can apply it easily and, and shine it up easily. But this is harder to build a foundation. And then we're gonna shine it up in a different method. Now what we're doing is building up layers. We're just getting a bit of polish, rubbing it in, letting it dry, five, 10 seconds, and then get some more polish, put it on top, because we're not shining the lever, we're shining our layer of wax. Okay guys, so we've given our wax about 10 minutes to harden. Two things you'll need, a clean cloth, and in your polish lid, some cold water or ice water. Now what I'm gonna do with the cloth, this is polyester, some people use cotton. Experiment, see what works best for you. Lay it over two fingers, pinch it all together, twist it around, and then you've just got a nice solid tool for your polishing. Now, what we're gonna do is just dab our cloth in the cold water, then get some of the excess off, we don't want too much, and then we're just very lightly going to buff. Now, the theory behind this is we don't want any resistance. If you start to feel resistance, that's the polish being taken off. So we're just skimming over very, very delicately like polishing an eggshell, okay? You can go back and forth, or you can do little circles. The trick to this is patience, just keep going until you start to see a shine come through. And it will take a while. I'm probably gonna spend about 10 minutes on this. Okay, and then once it starts to dry off, a little bit more water, and what we can do is just get a tiny bit of the Pat Deluxe. The Pat Deluxe has more solvents in it, which is gonna help the melt, uh, help the melt, help the wax melt whilst we're shining it. It's a delicate combination of melting and not taking the 
wax off. Every now and then switch to a clean piece of cloth so that it's not too saturated with water. Hiya, Hi. how can I help? Oh, sorry, the keys cut. Yeah, sure we can do that. Now you will hear lots of different methods of how to do a mirror shine, especially down in the comments here, I bet. Some people use cotton rag, some people use nylon, some people use to set it on fire. Some people will like to use unicorn tears, warm water, cold water, ice water, alcohol. Experiment, give it a go, it's a lot of fun. See what works best for you, this is what works best for me. But uh, the real key though is patience, there's no quick fix. Okay, so we can see our shine starting to develop quite nicely now. Um, something that might get asked is why do we only do the toe? You only do hard sections of the shoe that don't flex because once it flexes, it will crack the wax. So we just do it on the hard sections. All right guys, now that's been about 20 minutes of buffing and I can see my face, I can see my nose and my eyes. So that's about the level that I'm happy with. You know, when they ask you, where do you see yourself in 10 years time? I didn't think I'd be saying in the toe gap of a shoe, <laughs> but there we go. Right, so you can carry on for ages and ages and ages to get this shinier and shinier and shinier, uh, but that'll do for this job. So job done. we are done with all three of our repairs okay um, my favorites just so you know are the trickers I think these look really cool okay uh, now then some of you might be surprised to know you've been watching for what half an hour or so this video has taken me six days to shoot and edit in total and I'll show you why if we look over here these here are jobs to do and this is normal work that comes in through the door rather than mail order work which just means I've been busy, busy, busy trying to get all the shop work done, these done, shoot it all, all at the same time. Uh, I am a one man band here in the shop, so it's quite challenging. And that said, if the frequency that I'm able to upload YouTube videos drops a little bit, please understand I'm not being lazy. It's just all I can manage at the moment. With that said, that is the end of the video. If you made it all the way, hit like, it helps other people see this stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. I really enjoyed the video and the, the edits that I was able to do. Now, if you've got a pair of shoes you want repairing, get in touch with us on the Tring Shoe Repair Facebook page and we can talk about your job. If you happen to be new to the channel, welcome. I'm doing new videos every week, so make sure to subscribe. And we're done, guys, so I'll catch you next week. Cheers.